Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Legacy Collectibles to take a look at a pretty esoteric uh, piece of information. Today we're going to take a look at Walther PPK and PP pistols that were specifically contracted to and issued to the SS and the RSHA. Um, the RSHA being a, uh, a subgroup of the SS that was founded by Himmler in 1939, and it was specifically to kind of conglomerate a bunch of secret intelligence and secret police agencies. So the SA and the Gestapo and the, the Reichs police, or the criminal police. Anyway, um, it, there is often a lot of interest in what guns were, the, were used by the SS, and was this gun used by the SS? And usually when you see this uh, being displayed or being collected, you'll find guns that have big you know, big obvious SS runes or death's heads or various um, emblems like that on them, and these are virtually always fake. What I want to look at today is what does a real SS gun look like, and how do you know what it is? So we have four, five different versions, or four different versions of uh, PPKs and three versions of PPs that are known uh, SS or RSHA contracts. Now, the way that we know this information is kind of actually very interesting. It is from actual German records. So when the United States Army went into Germany in 1944 and 45, a lot of the German records were kind of impeccably maintained, with the exceptions of the ones that were burned to avoid them being captured by Americans. And these records will include things like the serial number and model and all the specifications of guns that were purchased by and issued to agents of the SS or the RSHA. So you'd go into you know, a, a, an SS office and there'd be card indexes of all sorts of information. And the US Army indexed, and the, the, well, the US archives and also the German archives include a lot of this information. And what some researchers were able to do is look at all of these serial numbers and say, okay, these are guns that we absolutely know went to the SS. If we put all these characteristic, all these serial numbers together, do we see special characteristics to these guns that indicate that they were part of contract batches for the SS? And the answer is yes, and that's where these specific types or characteristics come from. So that sounds a little bit confusing. Let's just dig in, and I think you'll catch on as we start going through the different types. All right, so we're going to start with PPKs, and then we'll do PPs. And the general rule here that we're going to be working from is that SS guns were special contracts written or sold specifically to the SS, and are thus distinct from the general production for uh, the commercial market or the German military. So the way that you can identify special contracts is generally by serial numbers on the magazines. So general production never had serialized magazines. These SS guns all do. Now other special contracts to say railway guards or bank guards, those could also be special contracts and they could have numbered magazines. That's why we have a couple specific serial number ranges and varieties. So our first variation of SS PPK is serialized on the muzzle, at the, the muzzle end of the slide. So you can see the numbers there. And then they also have the standard serial numbers on the frames. And then they also have a matching serial number on the spine of the magazine. Originally each gun was issued with two magazines, so they will be numbered one and two above the serial number. Now this first variation it does sort of have two subtypes, because some of the guns are RZM marked, and some of them are not. And overall the known serial number range for this first variation is 838769 through 999999, and then 100,000 through 192925K. Again, it's important to note that not every gun in that serial number range is SS, because that's like 150,000 guns. It is guns in that range that have numbered magazines and serial numbers on the muzzle. Now the second variation is generally referred to as K-under, and the reason for that is that these have, again, a non-standard serializing practice where the K in the serial number, and by the way this was a practice that was established uh, the PPK started off like at 760,000 
for a serial number range, and once they hit a million, they went back and started over at 100,000 and added a K for, Kurt, or for PPK um, as a suffix. So the later production PPKs actually have lower serial numbers, counterintuitively, and typically on standard production that K would be just right after the serial number. So a special contract here had as it specified that they wanted the K under the serial number, like this, and they wanted the gun serialized on both the frame and the slide and the magazine. And in fact, if I pull that magazine out of the gun, you'll see we have two matching mags here. They're both the K under the serial number, and they're numbered number one, which has the finger rest, and number two, which does not. This second variation is found in serial numbers from 206019K to 234852K. And again, not necessarily every gun in that serial number range is an SS gun, just the ones in that range that have the, the spine numbered magazines and slide and frame K under serials. All right, with our third variation we're getting even more esoteric. This is the K after pattern. And it will have a serial number on the slide, which is not standard. However, the serial number has a K suffix located after the serial number. That is a practice, so they, th this is how the serial numbers are generally done on all of the guns, down here on the frame with the K after the number. The non-standard element is having it up here on the slide below about 350,000. Because at about serial number 350,000 they started marking the slides on all of the guns. So like I said, we're getting even more esoteric. And again, one of the key elements to this is if it's an SS gun, it will have serialized magazines. So there we go. And again, we've got a 1 and a 2, and this time the 1 and 2 are located under the serial number. This variation will be found from serial number 242844K out to 330358K. All right, and our very last variation of the PPK here is basically the military finish gun. So this is a late pattern gun, it's got black grips on it, it's got the much more, much cruder um, finish to it because this is fairly late wartime production and standards are getting rough for everybody. Now by this time serializing the slide had become standard practice, so this does not differentiate this as an, an SS gun. What does is the fact that it has a serialized magazine. And on this variation, the magazine serial number is on the base plate of the magazine, not on the spine. So these are guns where if you have one in this serial range, and by the way the serial number range for this, does it, this variation is 382985K through 426712K. And if you don't have a matching magazine, uh, it is impossible to determine if this was or was not an SS gun, because it is this magazine that is the one discernible defining uh, element that, that can tell you that it was an SS gun. All right, there are three variations on SS PP pistols, that's the longer version. Now I've got two here, I don't have an example of the very first variation, so you're going to see these two while I tell you briefly that the first variation is a gun that is serialized on the slide and on the frame and on the spine of the magazine but it's relatively early production that has no P suffix. So that first variation uh, is found from serial numbers 977-985 through 981-212. It's a fairly small range, and again this is guns that have serial, serial numbers on slide, frame, and the spine of the magazine. Now the second variation is the P under, which is basically identical in concept to the, P, uh, to the K under PPKs. What we have here is a gun that has a serial number on the frame and a serial number on the slide. They both have P suffixes located under the serial number. They will also have serial numbers on the spine of the magazine. The serial number range where you will find these is from 124774P through 125168P, so a fairly small range. Our third variation would be the P after, which again is basically identical in concept to the K after PPKs. So these are guns where you will have a serial number on the slide, which again is not normally done on these guns this early in production. We'll also have a serial number on the frame, there will be the P suffix after the serial numbers. 
and then both of the magazines will be marked on the spine. And that's the distinguishing, well, the other distinguishing non-standard feature. So interestingly, where earlier we had magazine number one that had the finger rest, this one is on two. Magazine number one here is a plain floor plate. These were, when the, when the PPs and the PPKs were issued, they came with one finger rest mag and one non-finger rest mag. Because the finger rest gets in the way in the spare pouch in your holster. Our serial number range for these is 144343P through 204905P. And I know I've said this before, but again, this does not mean that every gun in that serial number range went to the SS. It means guns that were in that range that also have serialized slides and serialized magazines were SS contracts. Our fourth and final SSPP variation is effectively the same as the late war version of the PPK. And unfortunately I don't have one of these to show you either. Uh, the distinguishing characteristics are that they have serial numbers on the frame and the slide, although that was standard practice for all production guns by that point. And then they will also have serialized magazines on the base plate. So this, but that long. And the serial number range for those is from the 331,000 P uh, range through 333,000 P range. Now just to make this even more confusing, you will sometimes find serialized magazines that have nothing to do with the SS, which kind of runs counter to everything I've just explained. However, the reason for this is that uh, police arsenals often serialize their magazines, uh, just as a matter of kind of standard practice. These are fairly easily distinguished from the SS style, because when police armories serialized their magazines, they did so after the production process was done, which means after the finish was applied, after the, the, the magazines were hardened, if they were hardened, um, and they were done using a different process, where you can see clear and significant distortion to the magazine where these numbers were hammered in place. They were also numbered with individual stamps, so the marking overall looks kind of haphazard and non-linear. So there's an example, here's another example with a slightly different font. Here's one where they numbered it way down at the bottom of the magazine. Here's one a little higher up, and on these they're using Roman numerals 1 and 2. Well, on the actual SS contract magazines there are a couple things to look for. The numbers on these magazines are very clearly uh, marked on there. Uh, there's no distortion, they're clearly done as a single operation. You know, the numbers aren't, aren't uh, stamped on individually one digit at a time, and the font for these numbers will be identical to the font on the slide of the pistol. So if in doubt, compare the magazine to the slide, and if they don't match, and I guarantee you something like this one wouldn't match, then you know you don't have an SS gun. All right, you've done well. We have just one more thing that I want to cover, and that is SS holsters. A lot of people will say, okay, I have this SS pistol. What is the appropriate holster that it would have gone into historically? And the answer is, well, it's a complicated answer. Uh, the SS used a wide variety of contract holsters, which generally had no specific distinguishing marks to indicate their SS use. Uh, however, all of the SS holsters were black. They did not use brown leather. So holsters like this are typically appropriate. This is actually a really nice condition one. They were made by Akka. So this crossed rifle logo down here is Akka's logo. And they're of this pretty generic pattern that was kind of used for a wide variety of um, small German military pistols. There is, however, one specific model of holster that was only used by the SS. In general, holster designs were used by the SS and the military and the police and a whole bunch of other people. This is the only one that is exclusive to the SS. Now that doesn't mean that every SS pistol came in one of these, but it does mean the reverse. Every one of these was used by the SS. And the difference here is this is, this is also still made by Akka, but it uses the Thurman patent, which is this sort of funky design, which is intended, I believe, to lift the gun uh, when you pull the, the uh, cover of the holster open. This is a, a fairly distinctive design. This in black, specifically, because these were also made in brown, but these in black were exclusively ordered by the SS. Well, hopefully if you collect uh, World War II German small arms, this has been of some use to you. Um, if you don't collect these, this is some pretty esoteric information, and I'm impressed that you're still watching at this point. 
Um, one of the so I'd like to thank Legacy Collectibles for giving me the opportunity to bring out all of these different variations to show you what the real thing actually looks like. One of the cool services that Tom at Legacy is happy to offer is uh, free authentication of SS pistols. If you send him pictures, serial number, um, and characteristics of a gun, he's happy to authenticate whether it is or is not actually an SS contract gun. And sometimes he'll be able to tell you a little more information about it, if he has that available in his records. And from his perspective it also allows him to add more guns to his records, which helps increase and improve the scholarship on this subject. Because this is all reverse engineered data, so to speak. We don't have the actual contracts from the SS, we just have the actual guns, and you can work backward from that to figure out which they are. So improving that database and that information is always a good thing. His uh, email address is info at legacy-collectibles.com. Uh, send the email to Tom, and uh, hopefully get some extra information on a gun you might have. If not, well, thanks for watching.